YT Dan Duel Links is brought to you by Dank Duelists Like You. Become a YouTube member to never miss. What's going on my boys? YT Dan back at it again with another Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video talking about the new Megalith archetype that has just been released through the Chronicles of Glory mini box for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. And if you guys like these type of discussion videos where I go over the main box and talk about um, just pretty much the archetypes one at a time and compare and contrast them with other archetypes, then I think, you know, you should really like and subscribe to this channel. I'm trying to hit the goal of 50,000 subscribers by the end of this year, and I'd really appreciate your help. So please hit that subscribe button today for more dank Yu-Gi-Oh content all the time. Now, what I wanna talk about is the new archetype uh, of Megalith. And I'll, in this um, mini box of Chronicles of Glory, it has been a very underwhelming release. Um, the only thing I really feel like people are really excited about um, is the new Stardust monster, which is fine. You know, that is a pretty nice one-off. I mean, honestly, if they really want to drop that Stardust boy on us, they could have gave it to us in an event and did not have to waste a full mini box to hide him in here with all this other junk. But at the end of the day, I believe this mini box is going to be the setup for either some sort of event or some sort of big box release down the road. And these archetypes like Megalith and Mathmex will get their due eventually, but not today. I don't think that Megalith um, is that competitive. I don't think it's that viable. I'm just throwing that out there right now. There is a lot of interesting things that the Megalith cards can do, but at the end of the day, I would say it falls into that cute category you know what i mean you know they got a nice little combo it's special it looks spicy but at the end of the day it's not wrecking uh neo's fusion set up the graveyard wreck you for game like it's not messing with that type of strategy it's not messing with a lot of different strategies within Yu Gi Oh duel links and i just want to go over a lot of that right now so the main thing i want to pull up to contrast with these megalith cards is the previous main box set we got the Witchcrafter cards, which um, creates this entire different dynamic where you're utilizing spell cards in your hand to fuel the summoning of these other Witchcraft monsters, which all have different abilities and effects. But the main card in the deck is going to be the Maiden Ver or Maiden Vere. Um, and when you summon out that monster, it pretty much creates a lock on the board. Your opponent cannot activate monster effects because you can negate at any time. And then also, um, you can utilize your monster effect to boost the attack of the Maiden and the defense of the Maiden uh, so that the opponent cannot run over the monster. And nine times out of 10, you do end your turn with two to three different spells um, in the hand or more. So it's makes it pretty much impossible to get over that card unless you have one out which is some sort of targeted destruction which can be easily countered by um, the Kiwi spellcaster monster that can stop uh, cards from being targeted. So when I look at an archetype and think about is this archetype competitively valuable, you want to think about archetypes like witchcraft and you want to also think about archetypes like Shiranui, Dark Magician, and things like that of the like. Those all have a few different things in common, which these Megalith cards do not have. And I do wanna just kind of point that out. So when you're looking at the witchcraft, what do you have? A really strong negate, board control, and one way out that can be remedied by a card that can easily be summoned to the field. So does Megalith have any negates? No. Can you run extra negates in Megalith? You could, but you'd ruin the consistency of the deck. And then also, um, does Megalith have Recursion? Yes, they actually have Recursion because within the Witchcrafters deck, um, all the effects, not only do they synergize, but the cards float back to the hand at the end of the turn. 
But with the Megalith cards, you have to go through this convoluted method of either obtaining the field spell or open with the field spell to, to get a measly one card back per turn. And since all the effects of the Megalith monsters are hard once per turn, it really is setting up for either a Bethor play at the end of the turn or it's setting up um, some sort of uh, freight play. Um, so it's pretty much putting you in a scenario where either you're going to try to stall out your opponent and wait over a multiple amount of turns so that you can get over uh, their board with your tremendous amount of resources that you've been able to accumulate, which I do not think is a good strategy in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. It's just a long wait for nothing. Um, if you lose and you had somebody play up a high amount of turns, you've wasted your time. And if you win uh, and you've had somebody go up a high amount of turn count, you've wasted your opponent's time. <laughs> and I mean, honestly, I just don't personally like that style of gameplay. And then also, um, as you're just going through, the recursion is not worth the risk um, in playing these cards. So there is a lot of cards that can help out these ritual monsters. They send you at a thousand hands that can help search and Gishki chain that can help search. And then there's other cards that you can utilize in the graveyard to ritual summon these ritual monsters from the hand. And then you also have level duplication and level augmentation that can also help manipulate levels so that you can at least manage your resources better. But if the only thing you're doing is managing resources and you have to go out of your way to use skills and other cards just to get this deck chugging along, I don't think it's worth it. When you look at something like Witchcraft, for example, again, I have to keep going back to that because that is the latest main box archetype to come out and it's really strong. It might not be on a quote unquote tier list, but if you come across Witchcraft and you're not prepared, you lose. Um, against Megalith, most people can are prepared to deal with this. Most people run Back Row, most people run Cosmic, most people run Floodgate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can get around Megalith pretty easily. Uh, but from that same token, you could possibly get around Witchcraft, but Witchcraft has a larger toolbox because witchcrafts are spellcasters and not rocks. And rocks do not have a tremendous amount of support within the uh, actual game, except for things like Block Dragon. And then there's also another level eight rock monster that can also be summoned uh, pretty easily by banishing two rocks. Even though you have those cards, that still isn't enough because using those cards mess with the consistency of the deck. And if you're just gonna run three block dragons and a bunch of megaliths, you might as well run magnet warriors. So that's it, my boy. I really just hope that you guys understand what I mean talking about these megalith cards. I really don't feel like it's worth your purchase at all, um, at least not right now. If you can pick up these cards for free, use a lot, utilizing gems, I would say do so. But if you need to pay uh, real money, USDs, uh, ducats, dollars, bread, pimps, to get this archetype, I would say you need to pass uh, because these cards is ass. All right, thank you, my boys. I appreciate you for watching this video. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe. I'm gonna be making new content and uploading new videos all the time. So I appreciate you guys and your support. And as always, keep it. Then we'll be running with the lions, lions. We'll be running with the lions.